today on the program we're making another Kvaik beer with 7 pounds RAR, 3 pounds Chevalier. For probably a gravity of in the high 1040s or so. We'll check that out. I'm actually done chilling. I'm putting it in the fermenter. Um, this is the writing of one Chip Walton and that is what we're going to use some of. We're going to use a teaspoon or so. We'll get a video of that. I just bittered it with uh, Callista because I had these on hand. The bitterness is neither here nor there. Like my Imperial Kvaking blend, like my first Sigmund Uranus beer those were just like around 1050 straight shooting beers hops were inconsequential just wanted to see what the yeast was going to do that's what i'm doing today i've got i'm filling this fermenter up but what i'm going to do is i'm going to get the yeast in there now the slurry and then pour the rest of the wort in there to make sure that it all gets down in the funnel and down into the wort because i'm not going to put a lot of yeast in there so we'll see how much i do i'm thinking teaspoon and a half and I'll still have this jar for if it doesn't seem like it's enough I could add a little more but uh, yeah it's fun to see if you don't use that much to see how it goes so let me get my tripod set up and we'll take a look at that all right hopefully this isn't too janky we'll see what happens here the measuring spoon I have is a half teaspoon because I don't know where any of my teaspoon measurements are here's my idea um, I suppose I could just stick this all the way in there, but for some reason I thought I would use this. So, let's see how this looks. Sludge fest. Ooh, baby. Alright, so like I said, it's a half teaspoon. So that's probably like three quarters. And now she empty, and, you know, I'm sure there's better ways to do this, but, uh, so that's probably another three quarters, maybe a teaspoon. We'll give this one back. Chip's plan is to, um, dry this, the rest of this slurry. He wants to give that a try. So, I'm going to finish getting all this yeast in here, and then I still have a lot of were to pour down in here to rinse out the uh, funnel and uh, I'll take a look at the gravity and we'll wrap this up. So this is kind of fun. That thing says 80, the reading of my sample. And I tried this a second ago and it said 80. Um, I didn't get the gravity yet, and this, it was 90 when I was adding it in there, but now it's cooled down, 83-ish. So what I'll do is put a bunch of shirts over it, bring it upstairs where it's not as warm as it used to be, but hopefully it'll ferment 80 plus for the fermentation. A little curvile happening he's a cool dude a lot of good records uh, this word is so clear from just having sat in this thermometer thermometer hydrometer your mometer uh, test tube for a while so that's interesting but the yeast usually this style of yeast tends to make these things a little bit cloudy um, I haven't had a clear one yet after I crack for temperature, it's about 1047. Here is a raspberry cider that I made uh, last November that's on tap and drinking pretty good. Um, yeah, it's upstairs, wrapped in blankets, and I'll use my infrared gun. Is that what it is? Infrared. And check the temperature. I pitched at about 1130 a.m. Be great if later this afternoon early evening it's showing signs of fermentation but we'll check in on it so we've got the otter doll it is been in the keg for hmm I don't know I'll have to look and get back to you 
and I'm with Joel at his house, and we're going to taste it. It's a medium clarity, and I think it's drinking pretty good, but we'll see what we think. I'm in the house of Hannah and Joel. Cheers, you guys. Thanks for having me over. Cheers. We just drank some of Joel's Beamish-inspired recipe. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Michael Doss recipe. I'll love a little video on that. But now we're doing the Otter Doll. It's actually been in the keg exactly a month. And I uh, kegged it when I was like 10 days old. And it got down to 1010 from 1047. So we were drinking it in the kitchen for a minute. And I said, why don't Hannah be in the video too? And so, <laughs> so what do you guys or what do you guys get from this yeast? Because I was saying that most of the flavor any kind of unique flavor or aroma you're going to get is going to be from the yeast because it's not going to be from this one ounce of 3% alpha acid hop mm -hmm. and the grain bill is pretty straightforward too. Yeah. A lot of the time, whenever I've had one uh, uh, beer that has this kind of yeast strain in it, it's usually really strong in banana character for me, personally. Okay. Um, especially the scent, like my brain says bananas, but <laughs> with this specifically, um, with it being such like a real basic kind of grain bill sort of deal, um, I am getting so much more of this kind of citrus sort of thing, but especially like, um, uh, the underripe orange or orange peel, yeah. maybe some lemon, um, and... Yeah, I, I almost, really like it. I almost get kind of like a melon rind. Yeah. Melon rind. Yeah, it's nice. Watermelon? Yeah, like oh. watermelon or muskmelon mm -hmm. or something like that. Watermelon but like, rind. But specifically huh. that, that rind where you get a little bit of that. So that's when you eat guess. too far into the piece, the yeah. wedge, you get into the, that's the But it's really nice. Yeah. I mean, people, people love that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Huh. That's, I, that's, so, that's super spot on. Interesting. Yeah. I definitely get what you were saying. I get a little bit of lemon lemoniness. Um, there's a light tartness that I feel is gotta be coming from this yeah. yeast strain that isn't in all Kvike strains that I've that mm. I've tasted. It's not always in the beers that Ivar sends from Norway that mm -hmm. Chip gets uh, in the Chop and Brew videos, but it's it is in this one. I mean, it is almost like you wonder if you could parlay this into a another kind of a sour beer yeah. or even yeah. like a saison type thing if you made it like yeah. spicier. Mm -hmm. I don't I think I fermented this not particularly high. I think it was in the 80s. Uh, maybe mid to even low 80s. Yeah. I just wasn't particularly warm. Still maybe it would even beer yeast. It is, but maybe yeah. it would push those some of those flavors into maybe get something else out of it. Mm -hmm. If it was closer yeah. to 100, which is what is said that you can go up to that high 100 I think, Fahrenheit. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that you fermented it at just the right temperature because considering how, how simple of a beer it is otherwise, just like, because it, it, it is a smash beer, right? It's single malt, single malt. Uh, there's or, oh, wait, no, there's two, 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 malts. two malts. Yep, there's yeah. mostly Rartura and then three pounds of uh, Chevalier. But base malts only, at least. And like, yeah. and so yeah, just given that aspect of the beer, I feel like the yeast actually balances it really well. Um, and it just makes the a, way that it's stated. It, it's a. Uh, it almost makes me think of like a summery beer. It's like it could be sure. light and refreshing. You could, you could drink. Uh, I mean, it's not overly strong in flavor, so you could drink mm -hmm. a decent amount of it. But it's, um, it's a unique flavor. Yeah. What is it? So, you said the gravities. What's the alcohol on that then? Um, I don't know. Uh, but okay. ten forty seven to ten ten is probably like what five ish. Five ish. Okay. Yeah. 4.55. Yeah, not not high alcohol. Just mm -hmm. beer strength. Mm -hmm. Average beer strength. Yes. So this it's one delicious. is compared to the Sigmund Yearness Viking blend. I've done an other two more of each of those. This is like my fifth one of these, I guess. This is my first Otterdahl. And you saw the slurry. I just had like a teaspoon of slurry from Chip. And it fermented it out just fine. And now I have a jar of the slurry that I can... Mm -hmm continue to use hopefully I mean I'm getting into winter now I'm not gonna I'm gonna take a break from all these Kvike beers so yeah. you, you all get a break from all these videos too but um, maybe in the um, maybe next spring summer I'll see if the slurry is still good and viable and I believe it should be from what I hear I can just keep it in the fridge and, and use it but yeah this is a probably I don't know I the Kvike blend is one thing as an imperial blend 
commercial thing. I think I like this Ardall a little more than the Sigmund Uranus, though. At least compared to that first Sigmund Uranus beer and this first Ardall one. Although this is actually the second one because Chip made the first one. Wow, that's, that's heavy. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, uh, thanks for weighing in, Definitely. having me come over. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm. Catch you later. Cheers.